All right, I am here to do a reviewed slash discussion slash opinionated summary and critique on Wolf of Wall Street, the movie. So I want to do this for a long time, ever since the movie was re released. If you guys don't know what it's about, it's basically a, a movie representing the life of an actual person named Jordan Belford, who made a lot of money illegally on Wall Street, hence the name Wolf of Wall Street, and did a lot of crazy stuff with drugs. Ultimately, uh, his world came crashing down. I think he served some time in jail. He definitely did. And then he got out and wrote this book. And that's generally what it's about. And so, oh my goodness, I want to talk about this so much. First off, you know, after watching it, I went and I watched quite a few interviews, like this one that was an hour long, um, of Jordan Belfort, the actual uh, person that was depicted in this movie. In addition to that, I did a lot of research on the whole thing. It was very interesting um, because if you haven't seen the movie, it, it just makes it look like he's so rich. He has everything, yachts, uh, mansions, all this stuff. And there, if you go, go on YouTube and search the right terms, you actually see footage of the actual speech scene. Uh, there's a scene in the movie where um, Leonardo DiCaprio, who plays Jordan Belfort, is like on the balcony of his mansion. And there's like hundreds of people there and he's giving this like speech about like, let's, let's rock and roll. Um, and you actually see the actual thing and big surprise it's not as glamorous as the film uh, depicts it as um, so I want to talk about the first thing that pissed me off about this movie I'm not saying the whole movie is bad in fact it was actually pretty good it was quite entertaining um, but as far as re reality goes the first thing that really pissed me off was the ending um, at the end, Leonardo DiCaprio, he was shown finally in jail, right? After doing all this stuff and getting caught. And here it is where, you know, you finally get to see him being punished. And instead, they depict him in jail. But the jail wasn't even a jail. It looked like a resort. And I'm sure Martin Scorsese did this on purpose when he made this film. The, if you looked at that scene, he you know he was narrating how he's in jail now, and how long he served, and he was literally playing tennis on a tennis court. And there's like the, the camera started panning out, and you see like these ten the, like these two tennis courts, and then the whole jail looks like a summer resort. And that pissed me off because I, um, especially after I uh, researched Jordan Belfort. Um, from my perspective and um, from his, I'm pretty sure, based on how he was describing things, uh, the whole point of all this was don't do what i done. It's not worth it. Uh, it's not worth the, the failure and reputation and all this horrible stuff. And it, it was, I felt like it would have been a much better lesson to actually depict the truth behind the matter and show some punishment. But instead... You know, all they show is this two to five second segment of him, you know, playing tennis in jail. And then finally you see the final scene where he's back out there. Um, and now he's become a motivational speaker. And he's speaking to a crowd of all these uh, middle-aged young men about uh, selling. He's teaching them how to sell stuff. And so... If you go on YouTube and you watch these uh, videos of Jordan Belfort, the interviews, and um, if you read his book, and like his whole message is, this isn't the way to go. Uh, this is don't don't do stuff like me. It was horrendous. It was atrocious. It's not worth it. Don't do drugs. Apparently, he's off drugs now because it's not worth it. He did all sorts cocaine, um, everything. And I felt like that was his whole purpose behind it. Now, it's not like Jordan Belfort did not play a huge part in this movie. Um, I did a lot of research on that and ended up watching a lot of interviews with um, 
Leonardo Di DiCaprio, and one with Scorsese, um, uh, and Jonah Hill as well, on a lot of professional stuff about the movie and how they ended up doing stuff. And uh, Leonardo DiCaprio actually spent hundreds of hours, if not thousands, uh, studying up with Jordan Belfort on everything about um, how he felt to how he acted to how he behaved uh, so he could depict the part immensely well. Apparently he had never done drugs before. There's there's actually a scene that seems pretty realistic where he and Jonah Hill um, are, are smoking, uh, I think it's weed, and they were pretty stoned and it seemed very realistic and so I, f I feel like the general perspective of the public is uh, especially the Leonardo DiCaprio they're like oh this guy's obviously someone who lives very similarly to uh, uh, how Wolf of Wall Street depicts Jordan Belfort you know having millions of dollars doing all these drugs living in mansions partying it up a lot of attractive women um, doing all this crazy stuff and Scorsese does a great job of depicting like, this glamorous lifestyle uh, this almost overindulgence of um, I guess you could say material stuff um, but in reality when you do a lot of research and not necessarily a lot I mean I just watch a lot of videos read a few articles you find that he's uh, I actually read quite a few articles and again they were like the mainstream ones that were uh, pretty easy to find, you find that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, he l grew up exposed to that lifestyle, so he knew to avoid it, so he had never done drugs. He had to consult with people who had done drugs to, to play the part right. He had a, you know, he spent hours meticulously, he, he uh, regarded it, uh, the whole, uh, a lot of the process of acting, um, especially in this film, as very mechanical, very, um, not tedious, but like very mechanical over and over sort of thing and not as glamorous as it looks. And he spent hundreds of hours with Jordan Belfort just asking him all these questions about the whole story so you could depict the role perfectly. And um, honestly, you know, the whole ending pissed me off and in addition to that, when it was released, um, you could tell a lot of people got the wrong message from that, but uh, again, at the same time, a lot of these people gained the wrong message, you know, uh, I mean, if it's truly the wrong message, like, nature will have its way itself, and they will end up realizing it at the end of the day, like, if you do too much drugs, if you indulge in too much material items, if it's true that that's not the way to go, I mean... I guess I shouldn't be concerned too much because at the end of the day, the truth will bite them in the butt and they should realize, holy crap, I'm still sad or, oh my goodness, um, uh, all these drugs are not really fulfilling me as I thought they would. But, you know, I uh, if any of you have watched the big uh, college YouTube channel, there's this college channel that goes to different universities and films all the partying that goes on there. It's actually quite an interesting channel. Um, I was watching one of their videos um, a few m months ago, and this was around the time uh, Wolf of Wall Street came out. And basically, uh, they were doing one of the classic scenes in a movie, like all these college kids they were partying about, and um, they were doing the classic scene uh, at the beginning where they thump uh, their chest like this, and they're like, oh. Uh, they start chanting in like a sort of Native American can uh, incantation. Um, and the reason is, if you haven't seen the movie, the reason they do that is because um, uh, Jordan Belford, he st starts out in Wall Street in a stock trading firm, I think it is. I'm, I'm not really exactly sure. And the supervisor there who ends up... Um, turning out to be a complete drug addict, um, a completely impulsive uh, guy who's just very strung up and materialistic um, and a little bit loopy. He starts doing this thing and saying, you know, and pretty much preaching and telling this guy how to live. 
and then ultimately you know towards the end of the movie he, he sort of adopted that whole thing and he's teaching it to all his hundreds of um employees at his firm and long story short you know i see it seems like this is the message that has gotten out to these college students it was like footage uh, if you want to search it up it's this uh channel called i'm smacked and they're, they're there thumping the their um bodies and going and chanting to this thinking it's like the the most awesome thing ever like oh yeah the best thing to do is overindulge in everything and so um that's it's it's quite interesting so basically the whole summary of the movie in a nutshell is that Jordan Belford decides first he quickly gets fired from that stock exchange and um he gets excited he gets fired from that uh stock the stock exchange stock trading firm and then he decides to start up his own penny stock firm penny stocks are these stocks that are worth pennies and he makes a lot of money off the commissions like uh, each time he gets someone to sell or to buy a lot of stocks um he gets commissions so he goes around and uh he just tries he's he's like the salesman who gathers a bunch of these stupid people off the streets who don't know anything about anything and he teaches them to sell these penny stocks and he pretty much tells them just lie as much as you want we don't know a thing about these stocks ourselves just get them to buy it and he's a great salesman and he does it and he does it a lot of times and he makes a lot of money off the commissions and then later on he does another big mumbo jumbo play um where he illegally um uh does some insider trading pretty much buying a lot of a stock um it's actually a very famous stock it's it's a um it's it's a shoe company i'm sure if i remember the name of it uh any female would recognize it um 